Corporate taxes, something that businesses who can afford the good accountants don't have to pay. Now, the G7 nations just came together to agree on a global minimum corporate tax. And don't worry, guys, it's not too late to cancel your capitalist flight to the Cayman Islands. Never thought I'd be so excited to talk about taxes. Now, before we get into the solution, I need to explain the problem a bit. Corporations, well, they don't pay income tax, but rather a tax on profits. So let's just say I'm a corporation and I net a profit of two thousand dollars. Woohoo! I'm doing something right. Now I can either pay corporate tax on that two thousand dollar profit, or I can find a business relevant way of spending away that money and get my profits down to zero. Get those profits down to zero, and all of a sudden, poof, no profit, and poof, no corporate taxes. For more, here's Jeff Bezos explaining why Amazon is an incredibly unprofitable corporation. Let's talk about profit, or in your case, the complete lack thereof. Famously, <laughs> it's kind of like we built this lemonade stand, you know, 20 years ago. The lemonade stand has become very profitable over time, but we also、uh, decided to use our skills and the assets that we've acquired over time to open a hamburger stand and a hot dog stand and so on and so on. So we're in, in, investing in new initiatives. Yup, Amazon thinks Amazon is a great investment. So, for all intents and purposes, the company isn't making a profit despite having a massive income. Corporations don't pay an income tax; they pay an outcome tax. You can make a lot of money, but if you spend it all on business expenses, you're not going to be paying taxes on it. So, what does any of this have to do with a global minimum corporate tax rate? Well, if only there was some way that my San Francisco headquarters could lose a boatload of money, bringing my American profits down to zero, while my Cayman Islands headquartered subsidiary could just start to make that boatload of money, bringing taxable profits their way up. Now, the way you do that is to set up a subsidiary company in a country with a low corporate tax rate. Transfer all of your intellectual property to that subsidiary, and then pay yourself for licensing and charge yourself an arm and a leg. Now, I could tell you some super boring real-world examples of Google keeping their IP in Northern Ireland. Wake me up in 15 minutes. Or I could tell you about how America missed out on four billion dollars in taxable profits because the IP for Transformers and SpongeBob SquarePants are partially held by subsidiaries in Barbados, the Bahamas, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and Britain. Real Mr. Krabs move there, Viacom. Might actually be easier to audit that pineapple under the sea. An oversimplified version of this exchange would be: someone calls me and says, "Hey, I want to play SpongeBob Sponge Out of Water at my movie theater. Here's twenty-five dollars." Now, I, as a company, have twenty-five dollars that the taxman can take. That's all profit. But, but wait, I don't actually own SpongeBob. Viacom Bahamas does. How much is it going to cost me for those distribution rights? Twenty-five dollars. Well, you drive a hard bargain, but sure, take all the profits. Now I have zero dollars in America for the tax man to dip into, and my Bahamas subsidiary, where the corporate tax rate is zero, has twenty-five dollars. That's not great for America. So what can we do? We'll enter this global tax agreement. Let's work through a hypothetical presented by Bloomberg together to see exactly what the solution would look like. Because frankly, it's a little weird. A company headquartered in country A is reporting income in country B, where the rate is 11%. All right, so for our purposes, I'm an American company where the corporate tax rate is 21%, shifting my profits to the Bahamas, where the corporate tax rate is 0%. Okay, corporations like it so far. Now, with a minimum global tax rate of 15% in effect, Country A would top up the tax and collect another 4% of the company's profit from Country B, representing the difference between Country B's rate and the global minimum rate. 
So basically, the country where a company is headquarters gets to scrape a little tax revenue off of the top of some of these tax transactions. If the company is reporting profits in a country that charges less than 15% corporate tax. So, if a company headquartered in America reports a $50 profit in the Bahamas where the corporate tax rate is zero, well congratulations, you don't have to pay anything to the Bahamas. But America is going to scrape 15% off the top of those profits. If you report a profit in Ireland where the corporate tax rate is 12.5%, well you're going to pay 12.5% tax to Ireland. And 2.5% to Uncle Sam is going to scrape that little bit off the top. No matter where you report your profit, you could end up paying a global minimum of 15%, and a cut of which might go to the country you're headquartered in if you're paying less than 15% to the country where the profit is made. Now This brings us to the final question of the night. Why do we need an international agreement for any of this? If you want to charge a tax on foreign profits, well, you can just kind of do that. You don't need Merkel to give you the thumbs up. In fact, separate to this conversation, Biden is actually pitching a 21% dopper off rate for United States companies' profits logged abroad. Now, you get the global consensus to eliminate the incentive of a company to reincorporate abroad. Viacom Barbados. I'd like the sound of that. If America is topping up all foreign profits for companies headquartered here while France isn't, au revoir. A top up tax on all foreign profits is one heck of a cost for a single country to impose on companies headquartered there if competing countries aren't going to follow suit. Coordinated tax hikes should mitigate that threat. Now The next step to this global agreement is to pitch it to more countries and try to get some actual signatures on a page. The G7 countries are all in, and there's a G20 meeting happening in Italy this month. So Janet Yellen, get your elevator pitch ready. Potentially more difficult, Congress is going to need to ratify any eventual treaty, and Republicans are already grumbling about levying a new huge tax on multinational corporations. Until that debate inevitably comes, though, thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.